Graham requested me on Patreon to review the direct-to-video movie The Jungle Book Mowgli Story. I admit when I saw this movie was on Disney+, Plus. I wondered when Disney got the rights to it. But it turns out I got confused with a different movie that was released by TriStar Pictures the year prior, titled The Second Jungle Book, Mowgli and Baloo. I actually did see that one many, many years ago, although I don't remember anything about it. I'm sure you can understand my mix-up, though. Disney had themselves released a live-action Jungle Book adaptation a few years before Mowgli's story, but they're apparently not related. Anyway, what did I think of this take on Rudyard Kipling's story? I personally found Mowgli's story to be a thoroughly annoying experience. It follows the basic premise of the Jungle Book we're all familiar with, with Mowgli interacting with the animals, and it was those animals that created my biggest problems of the film. The animals never seemed to shut up and have given the most inane dialogue to say, mostly involving corny jokes. None of what they said made me laugh, and it made me wish this was a silent film instead. It kind of reminded me of that Walking with Dinosaurs movie that was released back in 2013, where they put wacky cartoon voices over the realistic-looking dinosaurs, and it ruined the film. On this movie, it felt like they put the actors in a recording booth, rolled the footage, and just had them riff over the scenes with the first things that popped into the head. And they got some talented actors to voice the animals, like Eartha Kitt, Clancy Brown, Wallace Shawn, Richard Kind, and Kathy Najimy. They'd just given nothing to work with. One line that made me groan was when Baloo referred to Bagheera as Catwoman. Get it? Because Eartha Kitt was Catwoman on the 60s Batman show. There's also the scene where Mowgli is adopted by the wolves, and one of the cubs suggests naming him Poo Poo Pee Pee. I know this was made for four-year-olds, but show a little more respect. The animals don't develop into interesting or entertaining personalities, and I was especially disappointed with Shere Khan. Even though that's a real tiger on the screen, I did not think he became a threatening presence. The film as a whole just felt like watching home video footage of someone's son running through the backyard. By the way, Mowgli is played by Brandon Baker, who is Filipino, not Indian. Meanwhile, the adult Mowgli who narrates the film is voiced by Fred Savage. No, you're doing it all wrong. Daniel Stern is supposed to be the narrator. In all seriousness, the narration is largely unnecessary, as Savage even narrates scenes where the visuals already more than convey what Mowgli is feeling. Really, I just found Mowgli's story completely and utterly boring. Even though it only runs 77 minutes, the movie drags as Mowgli goes from one little episode to the next, and none of them excite. A lot of the time, I just found myself playing Guess the Celebrity Voice. Some I got right, while others I was way off. I thought Mowgli's wolf mother, Raksha, was Catherine Keener the entire time, but it turned out to be Perry Gilpin from Frasier. I've been knocking most of this movie, but there are a few things I can compliment it on. Even though Baker's the wrong nationality for the role, I actually thought he did a decent job with what he was given. He brings enough likability to Mowgli and does an okay job with the emotional bits. Speaking of the emotional bits, even though the film is mostly a light-hearted one, there was a serious turn I did not expect. When Shere Khan attacks Mowgli's wolf mother, I assumed it would not amount to much. This is a G-rated direct-to-video film aimed at young children. She's going to be fine. Turns out she's not going to be fine, and I was shocked they went there, as it does not shy away from what Shere Khan does to her. For that brief moment, Mowgli's story has a pulse and is more than just a bunch of tired sitcom jokes, so points for that. The animal trainers also deserve credit for the handling of the various animals. This could not have been an easy film to make, as so much of it involves a child actor interacting with a bunch of wild jungle animals, from a bear to tiger to panther to chimps. The end credits list a whole bunch of trainers, including ones responsible for handling a specific animal. I can see why. Otherwise, I did not find this to be an entertaining diversion. Would I have enjoyed Mowgli's story if I had seen it back in 1998? Possibly, it's a movie where a boy hangs out with talking animals and gets into adventures. But watching it now, I was too distracted by the embarrassing jokes and the plot bored me. Anyway, if you've seen the Jungle Book Mowgli story, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for the request, Graham.